Howdy folks, welcome back. Thanks for joining in to the fun. Any of you Concourse 14 owners will recognize this little gem, being that this is the hard bag or luggage bag latch assembly. In this case, it is off the right bag. And you can tell that because it has an R. And also because if you look at the bag on the right side of the bike, it is broken. <laughs> so there you go. And what's broken on it is this top piece, which opens the bag itself, not the latch that holds the bag to the bike. Thank God. But what happened was I was at, I was using the bike yesterday. I was on it and I went to a destination. I needed to open the bag and put some stuff in it. When I did that, this cover came off, which is apparently glued there or bonded there somehow, which holds these guys in, which holds that against this pivot shaft here, which activates the latch. And what the latch ultimately does here, it's actually pretty clever how they do it, is it does this. All right, so this is locked, this is unlocked. And all it's doing is articulating with two little pieces of metal that have similar uh, geometry as far as capturing these pins. So, you know, it's pretty simple. But that's what happened. Now, I was able to get the bag to close very carefully because this thing is kind of loose and not really wanting to rotate on that pivot very easily. But it did work. I got it home, took a close look at it. I thought something had broken or cracked, but as I said before, this became unbonded. And what happens is, it's pretty clever design how they do this. Let me close it up and show you. There's these little, kind of like, I don't know what they call them, but they're just little, well, now they're on the floor. Take two. It's just essentially like a clamshell almost, that other half of the piece that goes around this uh, pivot for the uh, latch assembly. And it's kind of clever. You can see it has this feature to it, which is almost like a T-slot. And that flips around down inside here. And you can kind of, you have to kind of lift this up at the same time. And it slides in like that. You see how that notch lines up? And you do the other one, same way. And then this cover went on. And because of the back side of this being a little curved, as you can see right here, it kind of holds these in place. And the bonding between this lid and the latch lever, or left latch handle rather, assembly is what holds the thing all together as a unit. You said unit. Apparently the material, the glue, whatever they used, all over 10, those 10 year old bikes just decided to break down and I was, it just came off. So I'm going to have to figure out a way to fix this. Now, I've seen pictures and read stories on forums about these things failing. And I do recall, if I'm not mistaken, that sometimes it's been, um, they've actually broken. Like this is come off halfway, for example, like snapped in half, and then it's unusable. Or perhaps some of these internals are broken, or the bottom part in here is broken. I got lucky on this because nothing is broken. It's just separated. So it just needs to go back together and be held together. Now this is P6 nylon, according to the, the P6, which kind of gives it away on the back here. And I don't have any way to really effectively bond that or glue it together. So I'm going to do a mechanical connection, and I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that on this video. And I think it's going to work pretty well, so let's get right to it. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and repair this with pop rivets, believe it or not. I think it's going to work fine, and also uh, I believe it's going to be much better than trying to bond this with something, because I'm going to need some sort of exotic uh, material or kit to bond this P6 back. And I'm sure somebody's going to chime in and go, oh no, you can use, you know... Uh, liquefied, um, you know, KY gel mixed with Loctite or something. I don't know what the heck uh, kind of combination of chemicals I can use, but I'm not going to bother with it. You know, I don't have time to mess around, do all the research and order something online to have it not quite work right. So I'm just going to do it mechanically, as I said. Uh, and I have to reiterate, if any of these parts were broken, I wouldn't be doing this at all. I'd be searching for another one and just changing the lock set over to match my key. The issue is clearance on the back side, clearance. Not a whole lot back in here. And it's a little difficult to see, but you can get an idea. Then you have this rib going across, and then behind that, there is a little bit of space. It's plenty of clearance, if I got it in the center, that is, between the rib and the back here for a pop rivet. And there won't be a bottom clearance area. If I put it here in the center, it'll hit this point, which is that uh, area that captures the uh, center of that pivot or whatever they call it 
hinge. I guess the hinge would be a, I guess hinge would be a better word, huh? Or hinge rod. You said rod. So, all right, here, this, that's what I'm going to do. I have to come up with a way to measure that. And the only way to really do that is to come off a reference back here. So this is not going to really move this way or that way, you know, very much. It's pretty much where it's going to be. So all I have to do is worry about this, all right? And as far as this side goes, so this is X and that's Y. Y will be referenced off of here and X will reference from the edge here because we're going to use these little kind of cutaways here, which are the parts for what this, where this locks into this little pin sticking up here as a reference to pick up the inner edge and measure over to the center between those, you know, that rib there and, and then the back part. That way I get it pretty much in the center. How I'm going to do that is I'm just going to take my caliper and when this is in the closed position, I'm going to measure this way off the back, get a reference, put a piece of tape on here, blue tape, and then mark it. And then uh, we can do it from there. But I'm going to off camera verify this is going to be a good way to do this to denote the location. So that's my plan at least. I, I'm sorry I turned it sideways here on you, but it's kind of hard not to do that without me being able to manipulate it properly. So I'm kind of, you know, if you're looking at the screen sideways, my apologies, but doing the best I can with what I got. So, all right, let me do that and see what that's going to be from this reference here. Switched you around here, so I think it'll be better. So the edge of this tape represents the inside edge of what's behind there. Okay, that would be the inside edge, not the back edge. So this distance to the other distance of the inside here is, I need to shoot for the middle of that, if you can kind of understand what I'm saying. So I measured that out roughly, and I come up to be about uh, a little over about an inch and five eighths, just over an inch and five eighths. So if I pull it up to there, you can see we're about in the middle of that. So we'll make a line on this blue tape for a reference. About right there is going to be a hole. And about right there is going to be a hole. So I can just use the center of this as a reference. There's nothing that goes back behind there. So uh, it should be good. If it isn't, I'm going to replace this anyway. But let's see if we can do it. Well, let's turn the damn drill up, why don't we? I'm using a number 30 letter, or I'm sorry, letter. I'm using a number 30 number drill bit because it's just a skosh over 1 8 and frankly my 1 8 drill bits are crap. So let's give it a shot. Okay, there's one, and if it's a little cattywampus, it ain't going to be a problem. Let's hold that down next time, shall we? Yeah, we're dead and pretty much dead nuts right into the center of it, or close enough at least. See that right there? I should go get my flashlight, but I'm too damn lazy. Yeah, pretty much good. All right. All right, so now what we're going to do is, by using these holes, we're going to load this thing up with the pieces, and we're going to snap this on, and I'm going to have a way to transfer this through to make sure this is right. I could have done this all together, but I really wanted to see where these were relative to this because I can't see it anymore. And I know I said I was going to reference it off the edges, but I lied. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a way of transferring this over to the other, to this piece here, which um, I think will be pretty cool. And then uh, you will uh, see what I mean when I get to that point. I'm going to just take a little bit of this dicum and just touch around the holes. Let it kick just a little bit. Stays wet a little bit. i got a piece of tape inside here. We'll just line it up. This drops in and it it's kind of self-aligns. Give it a good press. And I'm right on the edge. I got my tape a little off, but you see there's our two holes right there. So that's clear enough where I can actually mark those or I just drill through them actually. And then we should be lined up just fine. Now I could have, again, I could have just done them together, but I really wanted to see where these things were going as far as relationship to there, because that's kind of important where these go. So now we're just going to line up to this guy. I don't have those pieces in, I know that. I realize that. Now the other two, if we do two at all, are gonna be done with this together, so we don't have to worry about any alignment issues, but I wanna get these in first. And now what we can do is assemble it. Off camera, I clean the goo off of this too, using a carbide scraper. I don't remember if I showed that or mentioned that before. Just get them so they're 
you know, nothing in the way. There it goes. Kind of snaps in. Come on, baby. Nope. You take, you put one in and the other one pops out. I'm going to get this together off camera. And they're not terribly easy to get lined up at the same time, but it's not impossible either. Oh, now i got to take that off. Great. Let it go and probably fall out. And we're okay. So we're going to leave this in. I think I'll pick it up and let gravity help us for once. Drop this down in. Hold it in place. Drop these guys in. I can get them in the hole. That's what she said. I'm going to take this. Oh, yeah, baby. That's one. Oh, yeah. You know, that's pretty damn tight with just two of them. I may just leave that because that is solid. And you can see they pulled way up in there. Yeah, I don't even think I'm going to put two more in. This, this is so solid with those right there. I think we're just going to leave it with two. Uh, I thought four would be necessary, but I don't believe that's going to be the case. You know, remember that goo is was only in the center here as well. A little bit spilled over on those little caps, I guess you want to call them. But look at that. No wrong with that at all. Again, because nothing was broken, nothing was cracked. This is how I'm going to finish it off. Stand by. All right, so this is how I'm going to do this. This is the uh, carbon fiber vinyl material. You get it at auto parts, and it's actually really good stuff. I mean, it really is uh, quite resistant to, you know, UV and stuff like that because I use it on the Magna, on the uh, little dashboard area behind the windshield atop the, the flat surface of the fairing. I'll throw a shot in of it here in a second. But uh, that, that stuff never breaks down. It sticks really well. And uh, on a complex uh, layout like that Magna was, you know, on that, uh, it's not really on the part of the Magna, it's that rooster fairing. It was a little bit of a prick to get thing to lay in. I had to use uh, heat and so forth. But on this, uh, I took my little handy dandy homemade um, plug, you know, punch for cutting little round pieces. I use this for tape when I need to mask off small little areas. And gonna, I just made two of them. And we're just going to pop these on. Now, I could probably file these flatter, make it a little less noticeable. But I want the full strength of that aluminum. And like I said, you'd be really surprised at how well this crap actually holds on something like this. All right, and that's it. Off camera, another day, because I'm running out of time here, is I'm just going to do the other one by just reinforcing it all together. Because I essentially know where I can put these now. Just measure over, measure up from here rather, and just stick the other two on the other bag in and reinforce that. Do the same thing, and we won't have any problems with that one either. Next job off camera will be I'll clean all this stuff out because it's all gritty and gooey. We'll re-lubricate it, make it work a little bit smoother because it kind of hangs up at the very bottom there, or the very start, I should say, when it's uh, in the closed position. The uh, latch obviously works. It's not broken. Whoops, wrong one. So that latch is good. Hi, I'm Mr. Lot. We're going to call this job done. So that's one way you can fix these on the Concourse 14 if they're not cracked, broken, pieces chipped off of them, they're intact, and they just separated. So don't separate from me. Go in the comment section, leave me a comment, subscribe, ring the bell, like the video, and you'll get notified when I put some other stuff up. As always, don't just repair. All right, so these are not going to work. They just come right off. The uh, material needs to be perfectly flat for these things to work, and with the, you know, the fact that those top rivets stick up from the surface here. It's just not going to, they don't stick. So I checked it and it's just not going to be any good. So this is what I did. First thing I did was I took a needle file and I knocked the surfaces, the top edges of those, uh, of those pop rivets down to make them flatter. Then I took those plastic plugs. They're made out of ABS, which is typically used for filling or plugging a specific hole. And it has a little top on it that's a little bit bigger than that hole size. And I cut the body of those plugs off and then was left with a dome shape, you know, piece from the top, which actually kind of matches this surface here a lot. And then I just uh, glued it on. This one I got a little sloppy with, but, you know, it's okay. It's not going to be perfect. I'm not looking for perfection. Um, you know, this almost feels like ABS, but on the back side of it, it says PA6, so it can't be. But it seems to be sticking pretty well. So if it doesn't last, then... Uh, it is what it is, but I think this will probably hold pretty well. They just feel like they're bonding. 
Uh, Super glue loves ABS, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. But again, this is a fail. Don't work. Don't do it. So we're going to go with this instead. Alrighty, folks. Job's not over yet. And shit just got real when it comes to this lap. This thing just would not operate. It would bind like you know what. A model. And I could not get this to work right. I suspect there's actually some distortion on the bag itself, but I'll show you that later when I get this reinstalled. This thing is bind was binding so bad because it was so packed with crap. Uh, you know, I guess they put a little bit of grease in here when they assemble it, but over the years, things 10 years old, I think I said before, it got completely rather loaded up with grit and dirt. And I tried spray cleaners. I tried everything. I ended up disassembling this, as I said before. And this is actually really easy with this. Um, all these things are held in with is these little tabs here. You can figure this out. It's really not too hard at all. You see you got a little tab there that goes through a hole and you can pop these off in literally a minute or two or less. The only caveat to that is the top one here. <laughs> now this is, this is just pure luck. Uh, when you have this would be in your closed and locked position, of course, because it's latched to the bike and you know you can't pull it because this little tab is in the way and it locks over uh, through its other mechanism too to keep this from opening while this is locked. Well, of course, this goes over here and snaps in. The only way to take this off, because it has a slot that engages with that tab, is to have it in the open position. Well, you can't take the key out in the open position. So what ends up happening is you're going to have to pop this up away from that slot, all right, just like that, and then turn it and re-engage it to the slot and then pull it up with the the key, okay? Now, I happen to have this skinny little key. It was just a duplicate key I had made years ago, so I just left it in and it came up over top of it, but that's the procedure for that. So again, just to reiterate, you take your regular key, and um, I do have one here somewhere. Here it is. Let me show you what the regular key. So right now, you can't get this cover off because it's engaged with that little slot because that slot pokes out through another slot in this plastic. So if you're going to take it off with this key, you just turn this, you disengage it, turn this back. You're going to have to fiddle with this to get back in, then take it off, then you can get the plastic off. But I just use my skinny key. The shit got real on this. So um, I've, I've gotten this all cleaned up. I did about, what did I, did I tell you already? I did like uh, four or five immersions in the ultrasonic to get this clean. I just could not get it clean. And it's not 100% clean as it is now, but it's the best I can get it. So it's working pretty good. So right now what I'm going to do off camera is I'm going to reach in there with some, I'm going to give it a classic reach around, get some grease in here. There's kind of a centralized eccentric as far as a cam operation goes to capture both of these. This slides back and either pulls these in or pushes them out. So this is your main business end right in there. This is what's going to bind the most. It's kind of hard to see, but it would be right there where you see that little silver guy, which is a rivet. So when you pull this up, you can kind of see the operation a little bit, if I can go slowly. And you see how that works. So I'm going to reach in here and get some grease on the slidey parts, and then we'll come back and give it a final look-see before I put the cover back on. And then um, when I fire it back up, we'll have it mounted back on the bag and see if the damn thing works any better. Because like I said, I was getting to the point where I'm ready to pull the trigger on a brand new lock set. It got so bad. But after I saw the price, even my price, because I have a commercial account at one provider, I said, wait a minute, let me um, let me revisit this and see if we can make it work. All right, I got some grease in where I think I need it. I don't want to put too much in. We're working pretty well now. But like I said, she just would not go smoothly into that good night. She wouldn't do anything. It just bound up. It was all grimy and like notchy, extremely notchy. Notchy would be the best description of it. It was like, you know, this kind of notchy. And when the load was on these um, tabs here from the, you know, from the actual cover pushing up against the furthest, you know, the sealer or the furthest distance that can travel inwards and cap to those little hook things, it was even worse because it's pulling against these. So I, it just wouldn't open. I could barely close it and I could hardly open it. I mean, opening it was like two or three times worse. What good is a latch if you can't open it, right? 
All right, a couple little more dabs of grease. I'll go ahead and reinstall it. I'll put the covers back on first, of course, and then we'll uh, hopefully do a final. But, you know, here it is, a video. We're just trying to show a simple plastic repair, which worked great, by the way. And now we got all this other crap we got to deal with. But, you know, retail, these things are close to 400 bucks. So, you know, it's very difficult for me to pull the trigger on it if I can fix it at all. By the way, folks, there's two, one of these little... Um, square nuts they go inside here you see if you bend this back um, these will come out you see it's kind of poking its head out right there i wasn't even sure where the other one came from when it fell from this towel but i had them both so those go in there and those are for the two one of the two screws because there's eight screws total um, so i just remember if you take this apart put these um, once you get this cover off put these in a safe place so you can put them back and, and you can put them back like this, you know, just by spreading that out and shoving them in. All right, folks, we're all back in service. It's pretty much behaving the way it was before. I mean, before this thing broke. So it's, it's pretty much normal. I think I said before that this one was always a little bit on the tight side. We'll take a look at that right now. You can see that there it's spread out here. There's some space, almost like it's bulged out. Hey, and up here, it is right up against it like super tight so this thing is pulling it right in there and it doesn't have any more room so it's really really tight but man whoops it's locked dummy but we can get her open and we can get her closed i do not understand why it'd be doing that the same the back way is the same i think the bag the lid but most maybe the lid i don't know certainly the lid or the the back part the main body of this bag has distorted a little bit because it is awfully hard to engage and disengage and this is just a matter of time before it breaks what i'm going to end up doing i'm going to end up taking these are not adjustable when they go in and out i'm going to either do one thing i'm either going to do a little bit of uh, uh you know die grinding if you will with the little one eighth carbide uh, burrs that i have and open this up so it doesn't so it has some room essentially or I may go on the inside of the bag here and where the screws are, kind of see them, kind of see them right in there where my finger is. Yeah, there they are, right there. I might take the screws out and do the same thing and elongate those into some slots so we can push these out a little bit. Or slot this, you know, even slot the metal. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with it, but I got I to gotta make it better. And I got to protect this so... This repair lasts at least a while because, you know, I, I, I don't want to be shelling out that kind of dough for a, a new latch. And So the next thing is I'm going to take that latch apart the same way, clean it really good, do the reinforcing because this hasn't broken off yet. It's I can feel it wants to move, though, this top piece here. I'll reinforce it the same way, dress it out the same way, this will look the same, and then... Um, make any adjustments from there on both of them. So I know I had a sign off earlier in the video that we kind of cut short to illustrate the fact that we weren't done yet. So I'm going to sign off for real now. So hope you got something out of this video. Like, subscribe, ring the bell. You know the drill. It doesn't cost you a dime. As usual, don't just repair, restore. Catch on the next video.